Thank you everyone for coming. Uh, we're happy to have you all uh, at LabRest here today. So we're, I'm starting uh, the, the speaking today. Uh, we're going to talk first about we, uh, a use case we're doing at LabRest, which is about uh, marketing automation. So we'll dig, uh, dig into that uh, later on. So first I'm going to talk a bit to, to talk, about, uh, talk a bit about LabRest. So first slide was about an history. So LabRest was founded uh, more than 100 years ago. So we're a kind of old company. Uh, what's important to highlight here is that in 2017, uh, on December 30th, we published uh, the last paper edition. So at that point, the company turned uh, to be a fully digital company. So this was a, a major uh, turn in the history of our company. Uh, just a bit of figures here. Uh, we have, uh, with a digital leader of media platforms here in Quebec, we have three platforms where we publish our content. We are on the web with lapress.ca. We have a mobile app and also on the tablet app Lapress Plus. Uh, we are reaching about 3.7 million uh, active uh, visitors here in Quebec every month, which is representing about 55% of uh, the population of Quebec. Uh, in order to support uh, various business units, uh, we're going to talk about uh, what we do in terms of data Lapress. So um, now that we're a full digital company, we tend to uh, be a data-driven company. So I'll start with uh, the foundation here. We are doing uh, every, uh, all the data engineering in the cloud. So we're using Amazon Web Services. We need also some big data, of course, uh, powered by Snowplow. This is what we are tonight. And we tend to use more and more serverless uh, server services on Amazon, which uh, very um, uh, or important in the cost optimization and, and the control of what we're doing. This whole platform, all backends feed uh, the what we call the central intelligence here. So we're doing some descriptive analysis, we're doing some machine learning algorithm, neural networks, we're trying to leverage all everything that can help us to to, uh, to, more, to control and to know more about our data, how we interact with our customers, how the customer consumes uh, our content today. And finally, what we serve uh, to the company is some insights, of course, uh, to, uh, for internal purposes as well as external purposes. We do some sales size advertising. Uh, we build some audiences to target, uh, to target users uh, for uh, our ad campaigns. And we're doing as well some marketing automation. So you might ask, so we're going to focus on marketing automation. So you might wonder what we're doing in marketing automation today. Well, this is how. One, my boss showed up in my office one day and said, we need to do marketing automation. <laughs> so, so, okay, I said, let's do it. He's here, he's over there in the back. No. <laughs> I was very really excited about it. Yeah. So. <laughs> okay, so I said, why? Okay, let's start with the why. Uh, obviously, this is uh, on the marketing standpoint. We're trying to uh, drive our readers uh, through our engagement funnel. So the way we uh, classify our customers is um, in terms of engagement is uh, this way what we call the funnel, so we have uh, by frequency, so we start of course with your enter as a new reader with uh, new and occasional readers, and our goal is to engage you, engage you with our contents, uh, of course by uh, suggesting and proposing you some interesting content that fits uh, your interest and your way of life, uh, etc. So, so the, we're trying to do that in order that you, of course, start from the left, going to the right and to the funnel. This is what the, the purpose of uh, uh, marketing automation here. Uh, let's talk about the what. Um, so marketing automation is basically um, the tools that help to automate and optimize um, all the marketing processes. So um, today that's something that can be done manually by some people in the marketing team. So we tend to what's very basic like onboarding process when you when you, you use a new app you receive an email that uh, welcomes you uh, all that stuff can be automa automated through so thanks to these tools so we this is like the software we're building we, we have some inputs on the left we are with, we, we are engaged with readers so we are trying to figure out what uh, our readers want and which best, which is the best way to, to communicate with them and we try to give them some tailored contents and messaging so today it's not about giving the same message to everyone in our, um, of, you know, in, the, in our readers. Everyone is very different, has a way to interact with the content uh, of our platform differently, so we have to really tailor our message. 
So in the middle, we're building the platform of mapping into the machine, and in the right, this is uh, the outputs of, of these tools that can be emails uh, that you receive, that can be push notifications, social messaging, and search optimization, as well as display advertising. That's why you see on the web every day or in the app when you see some ads. Uh, today a bit um, in how we do it technically. Uh, this is a presentation of our data ecosystem here at LabRes. So we have all the sources on the left here. We have internal sources as well as external data sources, of course. And we have, of course, SnowLab, which uh, helped us to, to, to know what people do on our platforms. We get all those sources and data and put them in the data lake. And then from this data lake, where you have all your massive data, we build some corporate lake shores, which helps us to filter and to, to really gather the data through different use cases. So then our, our net analysts can uh, leverage what's uh, in our data. And we build as well some business models when we need to do some reporting and swipe so rickets uh, data at a higher level. And based on those data, we can propose leverage um, some different tools we built. Uh, the first is called the Signal Builder, which helps us with the sales side advertising. Uh, basically, it's a tool that helps the sales teams to build some audiences for uh, ad campaigns which are targeted. We do some insights, of course, uh, some analysis, and we run some data science uh, models in order to more understand uh, some patterns, some behavior in our, our readers. And as well, we build some, something called the Customer Journey Builder, which is our marketing automation tool. Uh, just a slide, well, it's a technical slide, just to show you what the technology we're using under it. So we're basically mostly on Amazon Web Services. We're using Lambda, S3, yeah, more or less, map reduce, um, and Kinesis for the streaming. Uh, we're using, uh, we leverage the real-time pipeline of Snowplan, uh, which allows us to get the data in real time in our uh, data. Uh, so Okay, so let's dig now with uh, how does marketing automation works. Uh, okay, first steps of the marketing automation tool is that it collects events with Snowplow. So this is uh, the, the first step of, of the process. So we set up some trackers on our website on, uh, on two mobile, mobile platforms, on WordPress uh, Plus and WordPress Mobile. So this is basic trackers and it's very simple to implement. Uh, then the data are uh, collected and sent to what you see here is a Snowplow pipeline. Uh, so Snowplow pipeline uh, counts several steps. The first step is collector. It's an endpoint that basically co collects all the logs that happens on your on your platforms. You have a step of enrichment when the bad events and the good events are filtered out. No, that's the, the, the contrary. The, the bad events are filtered out. I understand why it's not working. Um, <laughs> then this is uh, this is delivered to our data lake through their real time pipeline. Um, our case is a bit special because uh, there's two more pieces in the Snowplow Snowplow pipeline. You also have some storage and uh, data modeling um, steps that is proposed by the system. But we wanted to leverage directly the real time pipelines for this use case. So we connect directly at this step of uh, of the pipeline in Snowplow. Uh, Snowplow is really like on Lego, so you can really put the piece together that fits, that fits your use case. Second step is, OK, now we have the data uh, in our data lakes, once again in real time. So uh, what we do now is that we leverage some, um, um, some machine learning, descriptive statistics, and deep learning uh, models. So basically, every time we will receive an event from you as a reader, we recalculate automatically uh, some different metrics about the way you consume uh, our platforms. So that can be uh, your, the, the best moment of the day that you read uh, the, our, through our platforms. Uh, for example, maybe you, you read La Presse just at night, after, you, after your, your dinner. Um, this can be some topic recommendation. Based on what you read, we, we can define what be the best uh, topics you'd like to read about. And also some deep learning, which allow us to really um, put a lot of variables of how you interact with our platforms and define some uh, other metrics like engagement. Uh, if you're really a very engaged reader or a low engaged reader, as well as some things like the churn propensity score, which allow us to uh, anticipate when somebody is going to churn from our, from our, our platforms. <coughs> So this is all, all done in real time, and it's really something that is run per user, so, so we can deliver really a customized uh, experience. 
And the third step is based on what we know our, uh, our readers, uh, we now uh, determine the best course of actions. So uh, through all everything we know about you, if you uh, the best moment of the day, uh, what you like to read, etc., etc., we found uh, the best moment to reach you. Uh, maybe you do more on your phone at night, so we'd send you a push at night. Uh, with the best message, what you like to read, what you, what would best you engage or re-engage you with the platform, and the right channel, if it's email or if it's a push or through social. So this is this is it. This is about this, this is the three steps that uh, marketing social automation tool allows us to really optimize. Uh, it's really uh, it's in real time thanks to Snowplow, and this, uh, the possibilities are very uh, very. Uh, Interesting what we do in terms of marketing. Excuse me, I have a question yeah. for, for chair propensity score. Yes. Do you use the mm -hmm. variable analysis? No, it's a, it's a, it's a model we develop internally uh, with our data science team. Now we have our data science guys over here. So you have, if you want to dig into detail about AI, this is okay. your guy. <laughs> if you want some engineering, come to see me. <laughs> That's very question. Like, uh, it's a basic uh, machine learning uh, uh, algorithm. So basically, we generate that we we did uh, <coughs> optimize the uh, the event, and then with the past with the past uh, two weeks and and uh, and more, we try to get it. So it's a supervised. Uh, yeah. yeah. You mentioned about reader. How do you identify the reader between devices? That's a good question. Uh, actually, we're leveraging some tools that allow us to find the match between our. Uh, uh, we leverage the device we have, which allows us to, to match the device between them. So it's not a 100% uh, solution, but that allows us to say, okay, this model and this tablet is the same users. Okay. So uh, to conclude, uh, Maybe three major points why we chose uh, Snowplow against uh, all the competitors. Uh, the first is analytics tracking possibilities. Uh, yeah, I'm just laughing because this is my boss who found this, uh, this sentence. Uh, no, the, the, the real great thing about Snowplow against all the, uh, we used some of the analytics before, is that when we need to, to add some new trackers, uh, add some new events, uh, we want to track one of those the time we spend on pages, on screens, or or the matrix, it's very simple. It's all it's the all in our end. We just have to, to develop the, the, the events, push that in our platform, and we get the data in the in our uh, data platform. So it's really easy to use. Uh, second point is real time capabilities. Of course, um, with our formal tools again, we have like two or three hours delays uh, before receiving the data, and we save the data in batch mode. So uh, we have to really um, ingest every, every data that um, the, the, the tools feed us. Uh, here, this is like a, a game changer. We can really show productivity in terms of marketing, in terms of audiences uh, to, to the organization. So that's a really a, a great point. And last uh, is the competitive uh, total cost of ownership to TCO. Uh, one good thing is that uh, there's the cost of infrastructures and the cost of supports are separated. So um, all the Snowfall pipeline is our in Amazon account. So we really see what's going on and who are, what are the costs. And there's, of course, uh, the cost of the support is really separated. And one good point to, to uh, emphasize is that the TCO does not grow as fast as the data points volumes. Uh, this is more against some competitors who really build you in the, the, the volume of data points that you have. Um, here is just a question of capacity of the pipeline that you adjust in, according to your traffic. And just a warning. Uh, <laughs> just yeah, like there's not always a good point for the... I'm no still time. looking for a great engineering team. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> if you know of any. Okay, just... <laughs> so obviously I'm gonna be, not going to be there in the few days. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah, yes. as a warning, we are, uh, we are, it's very recently we are planning to fun. We started uh, our projects last year, it was uh, in last uh, spring. Uh, you really need a great engineering team in terms of... Um, of the data that you, I mean, this, this solution that gives you a real flexibility in the way you can implement it, you can really fit your use cases if you need real times, if you need uh, really to, to, to be able to, to fit the, the events like you want, the data you want, the way you want it. 
uh, but you need an engineering team to be able to, to crunch data, to be able to, to, to filter what's wrong, uh, to be able to understand and explain to the company, uh, to the business to the business lines, how what is the data and what's the constraint and so on and so forth. So that's what we yeah. On what tool were you relying before shifting to? Uh, we were using Localytics. Well, uh, in what NGA. made you? NGA. NGA for the web. And what made you do the shift? What, was it like a specific case business, or was it accumulation like this is where we? What actually made you? Get us proof. <laughs> yeah, no, sure, 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 this one, just one. Um, so first is. Uh, Cost is a part of the of the of the audience search because uh, locally face you have to um, uh, negotiate in terms of data data points for you mm -hmm. and flexibility. Here you already have hands on the structures you want to implement and of course you get the data as the trackers you get the trackers is implemented. So and yes, we do have a great engineering team. <laughs> <laughs> that too. No, like for real, the, the TCO for the, the use cases that we had and where we wanted to be was, uh, was significantly lower. Um, the fact that's not loud and it's a big factor for the press, the fact that the data never gets out of our environment is a big factor too. You know, even with GA, it'll be or whoever else, the data goes to their platform and it comes back. We're using localytics as well, same thing, same thing there. The fact that Snowplow actually runs in a sub account of our only AWS um, AWS platform, and considering the relationship we have with Amazon, it's it's kind of a, a good thing for us. And, uh, and the last aspect is. Uh, I like the idea of being able to run a real time thing in the same pipeline like we're running other things on S3. So all that made it uh, a good choice. And let's not forget, let, let's not forget Fares Sadiq from Adviso who made a great recommendation and he's going to be a great speaker in about half an hour. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> thank you. Well, thank you. Who's next? <laughs> yeah. um, so, in terms of when you had your previous solution, did you still do user by user um, kind of analysis, or did you do more aggregated analysis before? Uh, we, we, we actually did some analysis, but we also uh, did some data science. Um, Algorithm model modeling on top of it. So, Snowplot just gave us the ability to do more what we were doing uh, with local base in a more controlled cost and, uh, and technical aspect. And so do you time. think, in terms of like now that you can do everything a little bit faster and you can maybe react to, to things that you see faster, sure. do you think there will be like, have you been able to see anything surprising yet? Have anything changed in terms of user behavior, or, or do you expect any specific changes now that you are able to? React? Uh, we expect that's going to change. We we are at early uh, early stage of development on the marketing tool, uh, but we expect to to have uh, something uh, in, in the few months, few weeks, few weeks. Would <laughs> <laughs> okay. be great to hear. Um, if you see any changes in your user behavior? Yeah, you can do this first. I'll let you know. Awesome. <laughs> All right.